-hmm. I just found something else out about you uh, today. So I know you sold software, but also that you broke your leg with the Bears. And uh, the guy that tackled you, you were a hell of a punt returner. You returned a bunch of punts in one game. I think you had the record for eight punt returns in a game, which I don't know what the fuck the offense was doing, but, you know, Fish was catching a bunch of punts. Bill Cower broke your leg, and then you guys became rivals in in the same division. And I'm kind of wondering if you ever, like, that motherfucker, he broke my leg in 1983. Well, you, uh, I don't think we played. You weren't on my team when we played Bill Cower when he was the head coach. But I reminded our guys Saturday night that in the event that you're a little out of control and you're, you're, you got some <laughs> speed – and you're going out on their boundary, if you roll into the head coach's legs, it's okay. <laughs> so. Always a good day when I got Coach Fisher on. Uh, he's the right guy to talk to. He's uh, lorded over a couple training camps. We are technically still in training camp. Coach Fisher, how you doing? Thanks for joining the show, man. Doing great. Always. Great to be yeah. here. Yeah, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's uh, it's a little bit more relaxing this time of year for me, as you know. I feel like every time I talk to you, I got to remind you of that. But uh, Fish ran a good camp, everybody out there. He was fair. We worked hard. But you know the thing about, I don't know if you realize this, Fish. I don't know if I ever told you this, but we were working really fucking hard, but it never felt like it. Like, you know, if people ask, like, how are Coach Fish's practices? I'd be like, you know, come to think of it, they're kind of hard. But we actually we you, you made it fun and you made it competitive, so we weren't thinking about that. Was that intentional? And like, how did you approach getting well, that competitive yeah, stuff out yeah, of camp? Yeah, you know, well, you got to get it, but you got to be careful. You got safety's got to be the issue, and you got everybody got to treat everybody differently because people have different needs. But what you want to do is the, the what you don't want to do is have guys out there in a routine that know you're in the middle of team and all you have is 12 more plays a team. And then you've got this and then you got that and then practice is over. So I tried to vary everything just so all of a sudden when the horn blew, you were done. Yeah. And so you just don't want that routine and it makes practice go faster. And then, you know, you spend all the time in situations, but try to avoid that. But, you know, it's, um, it's different. Obviously now it's different because, you know, you, you don't have much time. Uh, there's three games, you know, you remember, I don't know how many you played in. Did you play at all the last couple of years in the preseason? Well, Probably you know, rushed. the, the, you the couple, couple of years, the couple of years I got hurt, I know you had to see something out me out of me. And I think there was an Atlanta game where I looked over at the sideline late in the second and I was like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> But it was well, there. I wasn't talking about us. I was talking about at your at the end, your last yeah. two years. Yeah, like, no, last two years. New England, you didn't do much. You didn't well, take play much preseason. No, I didn't play my well, I played some in New England because it was new scheme and that sort of thing. I was coming yeah. from y'all's scheme that they were reducing me more to a three. Uh and yeah. in Philly, they were super fair about it. You know, they were like, yeah. Hey, you're old. We we know what you are, what you're not. So um take a seat and that was cool until we had it clinched and it was zero degrees and we were playing the, the yeah. cowboys week 17 yeah. and yeah. me and a couple older guys are out there well into the second quarter and i'm like man this is like worse than a preseason game i'm tackling zeke i can see my yeah. breath uh it means nothing uh, re yeah your recovery the next three days after that is a lot different than recovering from a preseason game exactly so that's the big deal you got to bring it back but what, yeah. what what give me a sense of the hours that coaches work in preseason because i don't think people at home realize like i don't think they know that players are there all day doing meetings and film some people but the coaches even more so you were good about I think like giving guys time you know the the assistant coaches they always seemed really happy walking down the hall it was something you were doing but like, nah. but yeah, like, were there I, I coaches you, what, I didn't you coach want, with that like were you know drill sergeants? Well, I I mean I had one that I had to back down, um, and I, you cross paths with him. Rest his soul was Gunther Cunningham. Yeah, and you know when Gunther got got let go by the Chiefs, he barricaded himself in his basement. And so <laughs> I I reached out to him and said, "Hey man, come on." I said, "Let me handle all the other stuff." that you just didn't like. And once you come be my linebacker coach and, and so he did, but one of the things I had to do early on, I mean, Gunther was the first one in the building and the last one to leave. And, you know, he's dragging his ass out there on Wednesday, trying to, uh, you know, install the game plan with some energy and you don't have it. And so I just kind of, my thing was, look, it's not a race. You get your work done, go home. 
you know, here's when our staff meetings are going to be, here's when this is going to be. But beyond that, let the coordinators decide. It's not a contest to see who can put the most time in. Get your work done, be productive, get it done. So, you know, training camp, you know, there's always something going on in training camp from a head coach's perspective. It's it's the the event of the day, the thing that you've already scheduled months prior to that, and everything is going on during the day. But it's those things that come up. And then in addition to that, you're, you know, you're, you're constantly planning. It's uh, you're, you're getting ready for obviously getting ready for the open. You got to monitor reps and you got to monitor injuries and you got to do all those things. So some of that stuff is better done at the office than it is at home. But yeah, there's a, there, you know, it's time consuming, but the other thing is, is, you know, you're not really in that two practice a day world anymore you know you're gonna have a walk through the practice and then you know you know how we are how we we change things up and so try to have the crisp practice try to build a full speed try to do your thing monitor but it's it's definitely time consuming and you can see the frustration when when things are people are forced to change i think i think tennessee and new england just just kind of aborted some some joint practices and they because of the injury you probably already talked about. Yeah. Um, but I just read that. I go, man, that changes the week. Yeah. So, you know, so now you gotta scramble and you know, you gotta reschedule the week because when you guys come in, we gotta we gotta know what we're talking about and what we're doing. Yeah. What about the joint practices? We I mean, I feel like we had a few. I know we had some when I was young. Uh, I think I was a rookie and we went to Nashville. And like the the draw of the joint practice is real competition. It's different looks. You know, for me, I love like I hated one on one pass rush when I was going against the same guy every day because I'm not getting the same look. Me and Havenstein, we kind of we have it down by now. But like, you know, when you go to another team, you see different sets. You also get the competitive juices. But what you do get, too, is these fights. And there was a big one when when we came to Tennessee. I, I remember Cortland was involved before I knew court. I was like, OK, that guy likes to fight. Uh, and then we also had a big one in Oxnard too. What? How do you? Were you guys there in do? Oxnard for that? Were you there for that? One? Yeah, Where'd I got caught on camera over by the oh. fence. Uh, oh, did you a couple standing there? Think, oh, yeah, that one. I knew that was coming. You guys. I mean, I I don't never told told that story, but I knew it was coming because of the conduct of one of the Dallas Cowboy players who wasn't practicing, and and I reached out to them to say, hey, look, some of this stuff may be a little inappropriate. Is there any way you can maybe put a lid on what's being said from the sideline? And when I didn't get the response I liked, I knew things were going to get out of hand. I don't know yes. if you remember, but I put beer on the buses. Uh, without you guys knowing it, because I knew it wasn't good practice. We weren't going to get through practice. It was going to end up there. And, hey, when it was done, when the fight was over, we broke it up. We're on the buses and we're drinking beer on the way home. Oh, I mean, man, I did, it, was, it I, was insane. It was insane. Yeah. Like this fight, I don't know if you've had any like this before our fight, but we had some real characters. And, you know, Dallas did have a guy who was in a hat, a bucket hat, talking shit. And actually one of our, our rookie DBs, knocked him down three times in the same fight it was incredible the guy kept getting up he was he's a fairly notable player uh but yeah, it was with an it, iron jaw yeah. he has he's a really a good iron jaw he has an amazing yeah. chin because he was getting oh. stuck but like yeah. there were cops running around the field like just trying to stop people i felt like i was in a braveheart battle like i was just running down the field yeah. looking for somebody to deck and then we end up yeah. over, by, over by the fence and the la rams fans who are as you know because you coach there like they're very passionate too and they were hanging over the fucking fence, getting involved in the action. But we got on the bus and I could not believe it. There was a cooler of beers, man. And we went back to the hotel. We had an early day because they ended practice uh, an hour early and fish uh, came through with the uh, Bud Lights. So, yeah, but I knew I, again, the point I knew it was going to happen the day before just yeah. because you could see where it's going and everything. So I was I was involved in one other first or second year coaching. We're down in Atlanta. And Jerry Glanville is coaching the Falcons. Buddy Ryan is coaching the Eagles. And this is a this is the run and shoot Atlanta Falcons. And so, you know, a conventional seven on seven, you don't break up passes or do anything. You just they just take the ball down the field. And there was some frustration on behalf of one of our players. He took it out on Andre Risen. Oh, by the way, I ran into, I crossed paths with them in the last year. I think it might have been out at the NFL PA game when I coached it the last couple of years. But 
I ran into him, and man, we reminisced and had so much fun about that fight because uh, they were. It was Andre and Andre. It was Andre Waters, rest his soul, and Andre Risen. And Andre Waters was on top, sitting on Andre Risen's chest in the middle of the field during seven on seven, and he's just rabbit punching him. And that's when the whole thing started. And that practice never finished either. Yeah. And so, but yeah, but there, there's a, there should be an understanding. I mean, I talked. I talked extensively about going in there and respecting them and, you know, and not having these issues because you want to get through practice, the practice, you're not going to get as much out of it other than what you say you did, Chris, where you get a shot to rush against somebody else, but it's the young guys that need the work to get them ready. And so when, you know, if you can get through these practices without those, those events and things, then you get quality work. But, um, you know, I can see now because of the three preseason games, which is basically two, um, you know, because not anybody's really playing in that last one. Uh, the one and two are important, and you're going to do joint practices around one and two just to get the, the quality work. So, you know, I haven't looked. I've done the, the, the survey to see who all is doing it, but it makes sense to be able to do it. I just saw Jerry Glanville on Google Image, and what a bell buckle that guy had. Yeah, yeah, he was I mean, a piece of work. He yeah. had to be a piece of work. Uh, yeah. how, how about with, with with opposing coaches? I always wondered this. I asked Kevin O'Connell last week, but you've been through a lot more than him. Uh, with preseason games, you know, we talked about earlier, like how you rest your starters or play them, but also there's the element of you want good on good when you can get it. You want to know, hey, are my ones going to be going against the threes? Did y'all ever rap before games, you and other head coaches, about like who's playing, who's not playing, and were some more guarding that close to the vest? You know, um, it really it really depends on who the relationship was with the the other head coach. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it's frowned upon. You know, the league doesn't like it. They don't you know, want you to cut deals in preseason games. I mean, everybody knows the what the deal is going in. You, yeah. you like a two-and-a-half-hour game, and you want 40 carries, and you want some third-down rushes, and you don't – you want touchbacks, you know, stuff like that. But, yep. yeah, I did. It was with Mike Shanahan, actually, and – um we had we had we wanted to play some young guys and the deal was it was funny it's funny you bring it up it was um you know all right i'm gonna just do these formations no motion at all <laughs> let's just get through the game so there's no motion like yeah fine no motion no big deal so we get to the end of the game and mike is he's he's getting ready to score and uh scores and ends up tying the game now, what you don't want to do is what? You don't go to the no, no, you don't go to so, OT. Yeah. So we, Mike sends Jumbo out there, goal line personnel, and he motions the fullback, you know, from I formation, from a strong set to a weak set, and then punched it in for two, and they won. Like, something like that. And he calls the next day apologizing about the motion. So, no you problem. know, and the guy traveled three year, yards. He didn't cross <laughs> formation, no strength change or nothing. But anyway – you know, it, it gets back to, you know, who you're dealing with. And I presume, I mean, you know, I would think that Tennessee, New England probably have a pretty good relationship, yep. you know, going into practice and they're probably going to talk about it. You know, that you know, you, you want to win the game. Uh, you want to play your players. You want to develop your players. And, you know, so there is, um, you know, there's, you can rub somebody wrong if you, if you had an understanding and then you disregarded it. You know, so, the one thing that you look for is that, okay, it's like zero blitzes. Yeah. You know, if somebody just going to lose their freaking mind and then just blitz the shit out of you. I mean, that was, that was Buddy Ryan. And when <laughs> we drafted Steve McNair and we were the, you know, um, you know, he was head coach of the Arizona Cardinals and he came into, came in, we had a game canceled and this was 95 and we had a game canceled during all the move stuff. And then we come back and Buddy comes in. Steve had – he hadn't played the first game because he's, it was canceled. And Buddy just came in and he mugs the A-gaps and they're free. Steve couldn't get this. Nah. <laughs> and it's, now I'm spending a week working him through this, like, shock, state of shock that he's in because he, you know, he had such so much trouble. It's like – Come on, buddy. You know, I'm developing a quarterback. I know? was kind of so, wondering. I was wondering if you ever had to talk Greg down uh, when we were in St. Louis and be like, hey, we're not doing any fucking cover zero this week. Oh, yeah. No, I, you remember. Well, I don't know. 
Uh, what I did was, yeah, I went in and said, hey, this is what we're going to do. Um, or what are you going to do? And then, no, you're not. You, you know, <laughs> you basically. But um, th that's where that's where it becomes a challenge. Um, and, for example, I know this was an issue for Greg. Uh, and But to me, it's largely a head coach's issue, not uh, a Greg Williams issue. But when you're down at New Orleans and you go to camp and you got Drew Brees, yeah. And you got ones versus ones. You're trying to you're trying as as hard as you can to confuse and trick Dick and 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 beat the offense with a veteran season quarterback. It's a game, you know. And so you know, and hey, that's all good. But you don't do that against Sam Darnold when you go to the Jets. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because <laughs> Sam Darnold might just say. I was seeing ghosts. <laughs> he might say that. <laughs> you know, I think I've heard of him. And say so that. you know, yeah. So you know what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. you got a if you got a young quarterback, then you know you have to your defense. You have to tell your defense to bring him along, uh, to bring you know bring the young quarterback along, um, and no surprises. That's kind of the way we, we what we did with Jared. Hey, one thing I'm telling my guys here about like fines in the NFL is there it's a lot of money, and uh, you were pretty good about it. Like you weren't looking to hit people's pockets, but you know around here these guys fuck up from time to time, and I'm like guys, like if we were laid out of the locker room in preseason, like it was like twenty grand, and I can remember Jim Schwartz just freaking out on three guys who grabbed a couple extra bags of peanuts and put them in their socks, and we were <laughs> we had guys walk out through the through the end zone during the kickoff of the second half. And I'm like, they're fucked. Uh, yeah. Do you remember ever hitting any of us for coming out of the locker room late at half? I mean, like all the shit that goes into a preseason game that coaches have to worry about that people aren't thinking about when it comes to the X's and O's, but even the, the, you know, keeping everybody involved. No, I, I tried. I mean, I, I, you remember that I, I didn't really like dressing down. You know, but but and the league didn't want you to dress down. Meaning, you rush, you you go out and play a couple of series in the first quarter, and you're done. And you go in at halftime, you drop your pads, you come out in your jersey, and and all that. Mm -hmm. I tried to stay away from that, but um, no. I mean, if if you're, I mean, realistically speaking, man, if you if you know whether or not you're going to play to start the third quarter, and whether you're not. And from my standpoint, I mean, I mean, there's a difference, you know, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. the, the, you know, the, the young guy that's going to go out and get that first defensive snap, he needs to be out there and warm and ready to go because he's either not most likely not played yet yeah. or he's carry he's carrying over in the transition through halftime, which he's young. He needs to go through that. But but no, I was I mean, the whole fine thing I was, um, you know, I could count on one hand, probably the number of players that I actually find. Kenny Britt, um, Kenny Britt, 20. Kenny Britt, yeah, William but, Hayes. You know, uh, you know what? But basically, you know, they would get a – there's a difference, Chris. Now I'm telling everybody. There's a difference between getting a fine slip in your locker and me sending it down to payroll. Mm -hmm. So usually everybody came in to have a – you know, I'll have a hearing. You know, I have my doors open. Come on, let's let's have a little hearing. I'll let you appeal it. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time I would just throw it in the drawer and say, all right, if it happens again, I'm going to double it and turn it in. So mm -hmm. to me, I never, I didn't want to take anybody's money. Well, now you know, there were some, when the league does, the league does, there's nothing you can do about yeah. it. But from a club standpoint now, if it's, I mean, if it's egregious, I mean, someone's late for a plane, you know, and stuff like that. And there's really not a legit excuse or, I mean, there's no excuse. But anyway, it's I all feel case. Like we had place. a guy late for the plane. There, you guys, the the guys have to look good on hard knocks, man. You know they got to have their bucket hat and their and their their jersey over with no shoulder pads. So you got to get your yeah. your fit right for the second half. Uh, with the hard knocks thing, you had hard knocks, and I remember not being on the team anymore and thinking like, man, I'm glad I'm not on the team anymore just for this reason because I do not want to get followed around by cameras in preseason. Uh, you guys did a pretty good job with it, but I know there were some, there were a couple distractions that got caught on camera. My most famous yeah. cut of all time on Hard Knocks is probably you. And now they they're saying no more cuts on Hard Knocks. How do you feel when you heard that news? Did you want to do that privately? Um, no, I was I was okay. Look, just historically, you know, Hard Knocks came to us for a long time, and and um, you know, I just kind of, at that time we was just like no because. Because we dealt with them with a competition committee and Howard Katz and you know yeah. everybody, and so 
it was like, man. And then I just kind of held out as long as I could. And then remember, um, we drafted Michael Sam Mm -hmm. and that's when they really wanted it. Mm -hmm. And, and I just said, that's not fair to the team. It's not fair to Michael. It's not fair to anybody. No, we'll give you the content. Well, our guys will give you your whatever content you want. But when we, we actually agreed to it was to capture the move because they'd never captured an NFL move before. And so I just said, yeah, do it. So, um, I really, um, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I say that, I mean, I talk, you know, Todd Haley, Todd Haley says Jeff Fisher and Todd Haley were the two coaches that got fired right after hard knocks. Well, okay. If that's how you feel, Todd, it's okay. I don't think hard knocks had anything to do with me getting fired, but, (laughs) but, but what we did was, um, you know, they just disappeared. Yeah. And, and they really did. And and so there were moments on the practice field or post practice where I said, Hey guys, um, I need some time here. Everybody get it. And they would shut down. Mm-hmm. There were no no hot mics. Yeah. If if you needed your time. And yeah. so and then we got, you know, we got to I got to look at everything and then got invited. Um, got invited to join the crew to watch the actual show itself because they don't see it until it's actually aired live on TV. Yeah. So I was taking coaches in each week to take them over and hang out with the camera guys and the sound guys and stuff and 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 to watch it. But I knew everything that was going in. And so I was okay with it. I, I didn't have a problem. They Literally, they just disappeared. Now, they continued on through that year. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that's when they had 10 good, 10 good weeks. And then they got to capture me being dismissed. So I never saw um, it. Yeah. I it's not either. something I want to watch. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it was fun. No, it was yeah. fun. It was, fun. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was totally fun. fun. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was a short week. And I, I got, thought you so... cutting me was fun. I always tell people it was the most pleasant cut I've ever, I mean, I've only been cut once, <laughs> yeah. but it was so pleasant. It was like, you fear it for years. And then you're like, oh, it's just fish. Call me on the phone. What you up to, buddy? We're just yeah. going to let you and James go. <laughs> yeah. How about telling the truth? You know I mean? God, like, no, I didn't necessarily get the truth out of, I don't think I got the truth out of the Rams, but but whatever their truth. But yeah. anyway, I was, I was okay with it. So, so that was, a, so there's a, it's a, uh, it's after, I don't know, we had a rough loss at home. We had gone out, won some games and then had loss at home. And then we're on a short week. We got Thursday game at uh, Seattle and it's cranking. And um, I mean, it's ripping, you know, and I come in Monday and so it's a short week and it was like, see ya. So I go, and then and then you well, walk. Do, well, how does that go? Do you talk to Bones for a little bit? Because I think he was the interim. A little bit. I mean, I was on the phone with him for four hours a day. Yeah. Uh, for the whole time. Yeah. You know, even even you know, just continuing the schedule and helping him and and all this thing. But so the cool cool. My memory was this: was um, uh, the team was leaving on Wednesday to play Thursday, Wednesday afternoon to go to Seattle and play. And so I figured once the team's gone, I'll come in and grab my stuff. And so Julie and I, and, and, uh, we had, uh, I think my Brandon's wife, Ann, we go to the office and they haven't left yet. And the, and the, the buses are parked around They're waiting in the escorts in front of them and they haven't left yet. Well, we had just picked up a puppy golden retriever Yeah, uh-huh. and Julie brought it over to the office. And, um, I walked outside with a golden retriever in my arm as the buses were driving by and I waved and gave him a thumbs up kind of like, good luck guys. I'm getting my stuff. <laughs> and then I got, and then I got invited from by case and, um, and the rest of the guys to come to the, player only christmas party so yeah. um anyway we really let loose school. yeah no we no we just kind of it was just kind of it was sad you know we yeah. all lost our butts and everything like that but it's it just that's part of it you know what bump phillips say way back when it's like there's two kinds of coaches those that have been fired and those are going to get fired you know yeah. And, yeah. and i went 22 years so yeah. there you have it well, with the with the hard knock stuff that we got to see William Hayes on a big stage, I think he got a nighttime TV spot or two out of that thing because he doesn't yeah. believe in dinosaurs. They took him to La Brea Tar Pits. Nice little segment there. And he got a mermaid segment. And he got a mermaid he got, segment. He got, he got Let's a not forget segment. that. Yeah, um, I can't forget that. With and the then cuts, it was Jared Goff. Jared, I think they asked Jared 
they were flying doing something and they asked jared where the which which direction is the sunrise and he didn't know yeah well so, one time we asked sammy brown to put south america on a map he he, he wrote it on africa did he he, okay. he also sammy brown when we went to london i don't know if you remember this we went up in our hotel rooms before we played the the patriots and you know everybody's got bbc on tv that's the news that's their cnn and sammy comes down to steve miller the head of security and is like hey steve can you turn the accents off can you put the can you put the tv in english he goes he goes sammy it is in english he goes yeah can you turn the accents <laughs> off though so <laughs> So uh yeah. Did we ever do the did we ever do the practice squad player of the year that <laughs> that goes to Pro Bowl? Like, yeah, did I we think do we that? Did. We did that? I think we did. Yeah, I we think did. we did. Yeah. Sammy would have yeah. been a good one. Oh uh, gosh. With yeah. the cuts, what what's the toughest cut you ever had to make? I mean, is is it a guy that's been on the team a long time or is it somebody that that you've kind of identified with their struggle trying to make the roster? Yeah, there were always, I mean, everyone was different. Um, yeah. And I talked to everybody. Um, I, I, the nightmare stories of the clubs were, you know, you got a, a GA or an intern, you know, saying, hey, turn your stuff in. And they don't even hear talk, get to talk to a coach. I always tried to tell everybody the truth, even if they disagreed with me. At least they know how, what I'm thinking. And yeah. some of it, and with the young guys, in particular, some guys, hey man, you, you you took it as far as you could. You should be proud, you know. And you, but you just don't have the skill set, in my opinion. Or hey, you do, but you're you're you know you're a thousand snaps away, and you need to find your way into camp. Let me whatever it is, and you just kind of do that. Now the toughest one, you know, you know, anytime. I mean, I had I had a conversation with Steve McNair and. Um, and it wasn't my decision. It was an organizational decision. The owner decided. But um, and then he found out from the agent. But still, it was the, you know, it was the reality of the goodbye um, that he's not going to be here, that he's going to to Baltimore. But, you know, obviously, we stayed close after that until until the unfortunate happened. But that was probably a, a one just because we were we had gotten so close over time. Um, you know, it's just, uh, um, and then you're right up there. I mean, yeah, but it, I mean, it's not we, easy. Made it, it's, we made it easy. I know. We made yeah, it we easy. did, but still it's not, it's one of those things that, that, you know, that's, it's a hard part about the business and, you know, and, 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 and I think you've got to group that with also firing coaches, you know, that's a difficult thing to do yeah. as well. And coaches, get fired because they refuse to make changes because yeah. it's not, it's just, it's impossible to have worked with everybody before, even yeah. if you got guys that you work with before they, they don't understand. So, you know, that whole, that whole aspect, but if you think about what, I mean, it was 21, 22 years and, you know, you go in with an 80 man roster, go to 53. I yeah. mean, you're talking about 25, 30 guys a year. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I, I, I did everything I could to talk to every single one of them. On a lighter note, you were talking about ties earlier. You remember the only tie we ever had? We almost had two. Well, yeah, we almost had two. We, we were playing San Francisco so close. I think we – did we tie them? No, we, we beat them 9-6. It was yeah. like an overtime. It was the most physical game I've ever played in. It was incredible. Yeah. And then we also tied the Niners earlier that year in San Francisco. So we almost tied the same team twice. But I wanted yeah. to ask you if you remember getting off the, the plane – uh, after the tie, a game in which I didn't know the rules when they missed that field goal at the end of the game, I was like, what the fuck is happening yeah. now? I had to look at yeah. Fish, like, give me a situation, yeah. Coach. <laughs> you weren't but, the uh, only one. Yeah, because yeah. they just changed the rule. And by the way, in preseason, they changed the rule in 2021. You can't tie anymore. So the other night, the Eagles and the Browns uh, tied like 18-18, and nobody wants to be at the stadium for another hour. But I got off the bus that night, and I remember face planning. I got on the bus and face planted onto the uh, stairs uh, because I had had a couple beverages before they outlawed having beverages. And I face planted on the stairs, getting on the bus in St. Louis. And I looked up and you, it was bus one. Like you were right there. You were looking right at me and you were like, good game tonight, Chris. And that's all we said. Do you remember that? Do you remember me falling remember, drunk on my face yeah. in front of you? Yeah. yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a, 
Yeah, I mean, you were just rehydrating. At least I, I played mean, well, though. I played you were like rehydrating. You had to hydrate. That's a, I mean, it was a physical <laughs> long game. It was a physical. Yeah, you weren't the only one. You weren't the only one that that was going. What's going on here? And then <laughs> what becomes different for coaches is you managing that game. Yeah. Okay. You there's a there's a threshold at the end, and depend on the scenario where okay, I don't want to make a mistake and lose it. Right. I've had 13 and a half, 14 minutes to win this. I can't win it. I don't want to lose it. And now you end up settling. Okay, worst thing can happen. We got a tie. The Staley, so, the Staley situation with Staley and Bisaccia a couple of years ago, where you know Staley's plan for the tie, I think it was. Uh yeah. you know, I, I still haven't wrapped my head around like the weighting of winning a game versus tying a game versus losing a game. That's something you guys are constantly considering in the fourth quarter of a game like that. Well, I don't, I don't, I'd never consider. I mean, it was just, I, I knew common sense tells, uh, tells yeah. you, I, I don't know what the, the, you know, the odds or the, the, the analytics say, but common sense says at this point, all right, it's four, it's third and seven, third and eight, you're at midfield, try to get it. I mean, you go for it at fourth and seven and give them the ball or two first downs and a field goal and you lose. Versus punt the ball away. Yeah. You know? And so those are, yeah, those are decisions that you just have to, you just have to make. Oilers, Titans, coach, should they be able to wear the Titans uniforms uh, that predated the, uh, the, the Titans, the, the Oilers uniforms? Um, I would say no. You would say uh, no. Wow. Well, I mean, I mean, they're the Titans unless I'm mean, now granted you know, granted, we were the Oilers and became the Titans. But You're the guy you who can wanna, answer this question, so. Yeah, if you want a throwback, you know, you want to wear a throwback jersey mm -hmm. um, or or uniforms, I would think so. I mean, they own the rights to it. They, yeah. He didn't leave. I'm sure the family and, and Amy and Bud didn't leave it in Houston. He didn't leave anything in Houston. So, no. <laughs> um, but, um, I, you know. But the Titans are the Titans. I mean, if you you're still the Titans, but, but you're do you wearing like the Titans or Titans or the Oilers uniforms better then? Oh, um, that one that's a hard call. Um, mm. I there, we had some, I mean, we had some sweet combinations. Um, I thought before they had combinations in Houston. I mean, okay. those were some. Yeah. Those were. Uh, I, I like, like the, the Titans. I like the yeah. Titans. Oh, All oh right, no, so I do. I tr trust me, I do too. I mean, we had some really great combinations, but uh, I don't. I could see it doing just as a throwback, just memories. What? Well, okay, so the Bears, your playing days, just one or two on your playing days before, like, because I like to remind people that that Fish was a was a good football player too, not just a good coach. Good football player played on one of the best defenses of all time. Uh, in that mid '80s Bears group, uh, and I kind of wondered this came up this week with Miles Jack. You heard he retired. He was a good player, injuries, that sort of thing. But he said last year he was considering becoming like a plumber or an electrician, and it kind of reminded me of the days when dudes, according to my dad, actually had off season jobs. And I kind of wonder, like, did dudes on that Bears defense, like not Mongo, maybe not Richard Dent, but did guys have jobs in the off season? No, well, no. I you guys think of one that had a, one that had a restaurant um, in Colorado. Uh, our first round pick from Cal uh, had a travel agency, um, Ted Albrick, and he retired into that. Um, I actually rented an office space from him because uh, for three years there in the off season, I sold um, computer equipment, software. See <laughs> um, what? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I but did. Like Texas I, joined, Instruments? I was a start. I was a startup. I was with a startup company. There's a long time now from the time that season's over until camp starts. And you got a three day mini camp. And you're going to be sore for a month after the three day mini camp. There's nothing going on. And, yeah. and I didn't know how long I was going to play. And I got an opportunity. Yeah, I was driving around the Midwest selling a, a, a maintenance management software program to petrochemical and utility companies. And <laughs> I actually, I'm uh, check this out, man. I made more money um, selling software than I did my last year with including the Super Bowl check. No fucking way. Yeah. And that's then that's what I was going to retire and go into 
when Buddy offered me the job to get into coaching, I actually told him no. In front of Julie, I told him no because I wanted to try to play. She was working in Chicago, modeling Chicago. And and then I, I felt this sick feeling, and I called Buddy back. I go, did you give my job away? He goes, no. I said, I'll see you at the airport. And <laughs> so great. that was the last – yeah, that was the last bit of software that I sold. I so, just, I but, just, yeah. I just found something else out about you uh, today. So I know you sold software, but also that you broke your leg with the Bears, and uh, the guy that tackled you, you were a hell of a punt returner. You returned a bunch of punts in one game. I think you had the record for eight punt returns in a game. Which I don't know what the fuck the offense was doing, but you know, Fish was catching a bunch of punts. Bill Cower broke your leg, and then you guys became rivals in in the same division and i'm kind of wondering if you ever like that motherfucker he broke my leg in 1983 well ever you uh, i don't think we played you weren't on my team when we played bill cower when he was the head coach but i reminded our guys saturday night that in the event that you're a little out of control and you're, you're you got some <laughs> speed and you're going out on their boundary if you roll into the head coach's legs, it's okay. <laughs> so that's what we did here. But yeah. uh, no, I'm kidding. But yeah, I was, you know what? Um, I just got an opportunity to start at free safety because Gary Fensick had gotten hurt for a few weeks. So, yeah. you know, I, I was, um, I was in Philly and they sent me back uh, to handle a punt because uh, they didn't trust the guy behind me making a decision. And so it was a low kick and I just grabbed it. I tried to get what I could. And, and uh, I got, I tried to get down. I got, I spun and I got held up and somebody came from uh, just wiped out everybody's legs and I felt the crack. And, and so I'm laying there. The only time I never, I was unable to get up. And so I'm laying there and the trainer comes out and doc comes out and and I said, Hey, my leg's broken. I can't get up. And he goes, your legs ain't broken. You pussy. And, <laughs> and so he starts, mani he manipulates it and he goes, Oh, it is. So <laughs> long, this is the great story, man. So, so we, so I go in, they put, you know, they wrap it up, put it nice. Got to go from Philly all the way to Chicago. It's kind of October. It's just cold night in Chicago. Um, I'm go to the, I go to the hospital up there in Lake Forest, whatever, get the x-ray, get the cast put on. And um, uh, Julie comes to, to pick me up. It's cold. She's going to meet me at the hospital and kind of in a hurry. And I'm sliding in the back door in the back seat. Remember those Bronco twos? You probably don't remember. Yeah, those they're a little bit smaller. They're a little, Stop yeah, making smaller. them in the 90s. They, they, yeah, because they they would just roll over anytime you yeah. turned left or right. Yeah. So yeah. So um, anyway, I'm pulling my leg with a freshly wrapped plaster cast in the into the back of the car, and um, she slams the car door on my leg because <laughs> she was cold and she was in a hurry. So anyway, <laughs> four doors. Yeah. Anyway, that was '83. I came back off it and uh, and played. But yeah, Bill did. Uh, he takes he takes all this credit for launching my coaching career. Well, I yeah. played two years after that. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. What about that, Bill? The worst yeah, sideline injury this. had to be William Hayes, though. Oh my gosh! I told somebody that the you know early in the summer that story, and yeah. Tell but, tell my producers tell they're it, back here. I, uh, I tell them William Hayes stories. Will you, will you tell them this one before we let you go? Okay, so we're um, we're in Kansas City now. This wasn't the uh, no. Yeah, I went to Kansas City last time. I was in Kansas City. I had two one hundred yard rushers. I had uh, Chris Johnson and Lindell White. Lindell White. So I went in there and we freaking we were tearing them up. So we weren't as good but this this time around into Kansas City. I think Kerry. Uh, who was our who was who was throwing the ball? Who was the quarterback? Um, Kerry Collins, on, probably. Yeah, it was Kerry. Yeah, so it's Kerry, and um, and Will's Will's clearly in in Tennessee. We've got he doesn't uh, know it. I've, in a second. No, no, no. But so it's like it's third quarter. Uh, we went in thin on the D line, and now we're really thin. Okay, I got like one five guys, and and. Um, the trainer comes up to me and he says, Hey, we're down to four now. I go, What the hell? Because Kyle had gotten hurt, Vandenbosch had gotten hurt or something. And now he were, had five and he comes in, he goes, We're down to four. I go, What are you talking about? What happened? He goes, William Hayes is out. He has a concussion. I go, Concussion? Are you kidding me? He goes, You're not going to believe it. So Will is sitting on the 
bench and the offense is r- moving right to left of the bench and Kerry is not going to take a hit. So if it's not there, Kerry was smart. We won 10 in a row with Kerry. This wasn't the year, but um, Kerry's, Kerry's back foot hits. It's not there. He throws the ball away. Well, it's a cold Sunday afternoon, Kansas City, and he throws the ball away, and the ball hits Will in the temple. Oh, sitting on the he bench. wasn't watching the game. He just looked. He was straight. looking forward. Yeah, I mean, there's people. I'm sure you know how it is. He's you, what you guys do. You sit there, you catch your breath. You just kind of you're talking to somebody. The ball hit him in the temple, and 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 the trainer just. I didn't. I was on. I was working. I was up on the boundary. But the trainer said, "Coach, it st- sounded like a melon." <laughs> I mean, and then and then you know I. I I couldn't wait to get on the plane to get the laptop to get in my seat and fast forward it to the play to see it. <laughs> oh, sideline. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Oh, that's Rough good. Luck. That's so Dangerous. good. Right well, in the bench, baby. Well, yeah. when we get you back on, we need some Eagles stories because I forgot all about that chapter and you got to watch that whole group. We had the Eagles set that sack record last year, but it might be an asterisk there, coach. I well, think. Yeah, we had some sacks back then. 18 games, I mean, though. It might be a little different. I know. Though. Oh, it's different. Yeah. Which, yeah. You mean you want to talk about Reggie and Clyde and Jerome and Mike Pitts and Mike Golick and those guys? I'm yeah. happy to talk about that. Badasses. Clyde. Wow. You brought Clyde to, to St. Louis. Clyde was my coach. Clyde is coaching the D-line here for Eddie at Tennessee State. Oh, Working great. with Brandon right now. Doing a great job. That's Love awesome, you. man. That's awesome. Right. Well, Coach Fisher, appreciate you. I know uh, we kept you a while, so thank you so much for your time. And uh, Always a pleasure. Back soon, man. All right, we'll do it. Be good, man.